This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 187, How I Sold a Blog for $11,000 That I Built in My Spare Time, by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dan. Happy Monday to you. Hope your week's off to a great start. This is Optimal Startup Daily, of course, where I read to you from some of the best blogs on entrepreneurship. And we're gonna get right to it today as we hear from Robert Farrington and optimize your life. How I Sold a Blog for $11,000 That I Built in My Spare Time by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com Yes, you read that right. I sold a blog that I built in my spare time for $11,000 and I'm so excited that I did. The whole process from creating the website to the sale itself was a bit of a fluke, but I've received several questions about how I was able to find a buyer and what the process involved, so I decided to share my story and put this guide together for you. You see, I never really set out to build a blog to sell, but like so many other online entrepreneurs, you get an idea, you have a few minutes, and you're down the rabbit hole pretty quick. For me, that happens about once a quarter, and the projects usually end up just idling or disappearing into the abyss of the internet. Maybe I'll start a series on failed ideas I've tried. I have a folder saved with some pretty awesome stuff. But back to the blog. If you've ever considered selling a website, or if you're in the market to buy a website, Here's my story about how I sold a blog and what I learned about the process. Wait, what? You built and sold a blog? Traveling for work can be tiring, but it's also pretty boring. After work, you go to happy hour or dinner, and then you just waste away watching TV in a hotel room far from home. But that's not what internet entrepreneurs do. No, we create businesses in our spare time. And on one occasion, I got the great idea to start a blog about the lifestyle that is online entrepreneurship, It would be a fun mix of some of my favorite topics, business, money, style, and more. In my mind, the website had the potential to turn into an amazing online magazine. Or not. Because after a while, the passion for the new website started to fade. I was building it for the wrong reasons, not because I was passionate about the subject, but because it was another business. And I had a main business and a side business already. I didn't need another business that I wasn't passionate about. Why I decided to sell my website. So, over time, my entrepreneurship blog was becoming more and more outsourced. It had a staff writer, I would post new content to it once a week, and it was minimal. The site design started to get a little stale, partly because I only spent about $10 on the design via Fiverr and a free theme, and I really wasn't committed to making much content. However, some of the content I did create was making great money through affiliate sales, and as a whole, the site was making about $10,000 per year by itself without much effort. This easily covered the cost of the website and the expenses associated with hiring a freelance writer to create content, but it wasn't doing anything for me, and it was still a headache to check in on and make sure things were going as expected. As such, I pondered the idea of selling the website, but never took any significant action. I just kept my eyes out for the right opportunity. Searching for website buyers. As any blog owner will tell you, after a period of time, you start to get offers to purchase your website or you become connected to others who've sold their sites and how they did it. While there are places like flippa.com that you can list your website for sale, there are actually brokers and even private individuals who help sell websites. After speaking with several people who'd sold their sites, I connected with Latonas to sell my site. Almost like real estate brokers, they already had contacts with people who would be interested in purchasing a website in that space. As such, they connected me with several interested people right away. Negotiating the deal. Within a week of listing my entrepreneurship blog for sale, I had three solid offers and each wanted to do a little due diligence. I provided them with reports showing the traffic and screenshots of the income, all so that they could see what the site was doing. After providing them the information, Two of the buyers were serious and wanted me to answer a bunch of questions about the business and sale. This is where selling a website is a bit different than selling property. There's an actual business model attached to the site. It's not just the domain name that the buyer wants. So they want to dig into your business as well as your traffic and metrics. I can be weird, but you have to remember, if you're buying a blog, you'd like to know that same information too. After I answered all his questions, one buyer finally made an offer on the site. We negotiated for several days before finally coming in at $11,000, 1.1 times annual revenue for the site. Considering there were about $1,200 in annual expenses on the site, roughly $100 a month, that means it sold for roughly 1.25x annual profit. This is on the low end of the blog valuation scale, 
with many experts arguing that websites should sell from 1.5 to 3 times the annual profit. However, the traffic to the site was low and I didn't want to put the time in to scale it. As such, I was fine with the offer. The escrow process for selling a website. After accepting the offer, we went into escrow, just like you'd go into escrow on a house. However, instead of exchanging a house for money, we were exchanging a domain name and files for money. Escrow.com is the tool that we used for escrow, and they have a section designed specifically for selling domain names and websites. By using escrow.com, everyone is protected. Escrow.com verifies the information on the website with the registrar and also ensures that the money clears before anything changes hands. For small website sales or when working with someone you trust, you don't need to use escrow. It does cost more. But for this transaction, $11,000 and an unknown buyer, it made a lot of sense. Beyond the domain name and website, I also transferred over all the social media accounts for the website to the buyer. Once escrow was completed, I had $11,000 in the bank. Enjoying my $11,000 blog sale. The entire process took about three months. I listed my blog for sale on July 10th, I got my first really interested buyers on July 28th, and I closed on the sale on September 15th. However, most of the work took place in late August, early September when I had to transfer everything over to escrow. Now that it's complete, I'm really glad that I sold my blog. Several people have asked, if it really wasn't much work, why did you sell it when it was earning you $1,000 per month? Honestly, because it was a weight on my shoulders that was holding me back from earning $10,000 per month. You're right, it didn't take much time to manage, but it still took some time, and it was still precious time that didn't align with what I wanted to be doing. It doesn't hurt that the entire project was purely a side gig started out of boredom. It never hurts to get a five-figure paycheck for that. You just listened to the post titled How I Sold a Blog for $11,000 That I Built in My Spare Time by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. And I'll tell you about Robert in just a sec, but first, a big thank you to Oracle for their support. We all want to know we have enough to get where we want to go. For instance, you either have enough energy to run a marathon or you're on the side of the road wheezing. How about your startup? Does it have enough cloud computing power to win and handle the really big customers? You might think stable, enterprise-ready cloud infrastructure like Oracle's is out of reach for your new company. But Oracle for startups was made just for you. Oracle wants to help you land those big customers, so they're offering preferred pricing on enterprise cloud for startups, free cloud credits, and 70% off their cloud services. And with multi-cloud support and no vendor lock-in, you can build it out any way you want. Oracle for Startups doesn't want you wheezing on the side of the road. They want you to have enough power to scale and land your dream customer. Visit oracle.com slash go to slash OSD. That's oracle.com slash go to slash OSD. And I have that linked in this episode's description. And thank you to Robert. He typically writes posts about personal finance, so you're often gonna hear him being narrated on Optimal Finance Daily. And the mission of his site is to help you escape student loan debt so that you can start building real wealth. And that's through helping you navigate the financial decisions that you're gonna have to make at each step of your journey. The College Investor provides advice, guidance, guides, and review tools. There are a bunch of free tools and categories on his site to browse. And he also has a podcast called The College Investor Audio Show that you can check out. So come by thecollegeinvestor.com for a lot more. His site, by the way, gets millions of readers every single month, and for good reason. So thank you again to Robert for letting us share his work. That's gonna do it for today. I thank you, as always, for listening and being a subscriber, and hope again that your week is off to a great start. And I'll be back with you tomorrow where I'm gonna have a post from Leo Babauta. So I'll see you there, where your optimal life awaits.